Hey there, everybody. It's Mike Delisio coming to you with another rapid fire roundup. The idea behind these videos is that uh, I talk about games that have been reviewed by somebody else uh, in another format, and I just give you my uh, impressions on them and thoughts on them in a pretty quick type of way. Uh, let's just do these in alphabetical order. That's what we'll do. All right. So coming up first, we have another Christmas romance movie. Oof, I'm giving this one a four. Um, here's the problem, really, is that they wasted a really cool theme. So this is clearly based on those kind of lifetime movies, the TV channel uh, here in the United States, where you've got these romantic holiday-themed movies, and they're all pretty cheesy, but a lot of people like watching them, either because they kind of just like those romantic, sappy type movies. I think some other people kind of watch them because of the so good it's bad type of thing. I don't know. I've never really watched most of them, but I've sure seen the commercials. And they've got this really good theme because it's very funny, right? It's inherently funny, this idea of you are creating one of these movies. And they actually did a decent job with incorporating those elements, so, you know, like you have the meet cute cards, how do they meet, those, that's good. The problem is, is that it's tied to a mechanic, uh, a game with the mechanics that are pretty awful. Uh, it's a dice rolling game. It is a really monotonous type of a game where there's no real flow because other people are putting dice on their cards on everyone's turn. Uh, it, it, it just is, kind of boring and it goes on way too long. So I, it's a shame because I think this could have been a really good, uh, fun, silly game and it got kind of dragged down by pretty bad <laughs> mechanics. All right, up next is Kabanga. And this is a small card game that is getting quite a bit of buzz, at least from what I can tell. I'm giving it a six, it's fine. Um, I think that it's a very snappy game, right? It's quick. There's not a whole lot of rules. I, I, I'm, I'm, those are the types of games I've been in the mood to play here lately. And so it was fine. It's not bad. I don't quite get the buzz. It's, it doesn't really do anything that's tremendously innovative to me. You, you essentially have two kind of uh, columns of cards and, and they're going to have number values on either side and you're trying to play cards in such of a way that the difference between the number on either side is very narrow because if people have cards in between those two values in their hands, they can scream kabanga and they can throw out those cards and those are penalties for you. Simple, can be fun with in the, kind of the chaotic very luck driven uh, way that these card games can be and it's fine but i don't really know that i would re well i'm not recommending it necessarily i'm giving it a six because it's just okay and there's a lot of really good fun snappy card games out there all right at number three i have dance of ibexes and this is coming from a korean publisher play t games really nice little production um this is Six Nymphed, the board game, which I didn't even actually know existed before I played this game, and, and uh, it's a re-implementation of Six Nymphed, the board game. Six Nymphed is a card game that can be, depending on the player count, especially at the higher player counts, very chaotic. And the game, the board game is the same way. Dance of Ibexes is very much the same way. I'm giving it a seven uh, out of 10. Uh, I recommend it, but you have to know going in that there are very many things that are not really in your control, um, especially, again, at those larger player counts. But if you're okay with a bit of a kind of a chaotic um, type of a game where randomness will play a part, but if you've got a group that is willing to kind of have fun with it and, and kind of trash talk, you don't have to trash talk, I guess. That's kind of silly, but, but kind of share in the joy of everyone's misfortune, including your own, uh, then I think that that Dance of Ibex is, is uh, definitely worth a checking out, especially if you like Six Nymphs, the card game, you should try the, the, the board game. It's essentially the same idea with a couple of little twists added. 
All right, coming up next is Far Away, and I'm giving this an eight out of 10 with room to grow. Uh, this is a, a small card game, and you remember I was just talking about Kabanga. So this is a perfect example of a game that has really not many more rules than that, but there's so much more game there, uh, and it's so satisfying. All you're doing is playing eight cards. Everyone is playing eight cards simultaneously, so it's a quick game. The, the, the hook to the game is that you'll be playing cards from left to right in a tableau in front of you, or just kind of like a, a display of cards in front of you. And after the eighth round, you're gonna score all those cards, but you're not gonna score them in the order you play them. You're gonna score them in the reverse order. So it's a, it's a real interesting kind of hook where the earlier cards that you're playing, you're hoping are gonna give you resources for the cards later on in the line that you haven't even seen or placed yet, because those are the ones that are gonna be scoring first. You're doing this through a drafting uh, mechanism, and all the cards are numbered, and if you have the lowest number, then you're gonna have a chance to uh, draft first. There are ways to get these other smaller cards that will give you extra resources and bonuses. A really, really clever game, uh, one that I have played a bunch and look forward to playing a lot more. That is Far Away. All right, coming up next is Five Towers. Well, we're just going with small card game, small card game, small card game. Five Towers is one that I was a bit disappointed with. I'm giving it a five. Um, it just felt boring. <laughs> that's, that's the word that comes to mind. So you're building these towers in front of you and, with cards. They're made up of cards. And you want to have these the tallest ones available, but you're going in ascending order of numbers. I feel like I've played other versions of this same type of game, and I all felt that they were, they were just better experiences. I mean, this looks nice. It's got a really neat uh, art. Uh, look to it and, and the, the cards look good and, and they're good quality. It's a nice production. Uh, no complaints there. And I don't even know that I'm complaining about the game. It's perfectly fine. That's why it gets a five. It's fine. Um, but boy, will it not be the first of these types of kind of climbing type games that I would ever come to. Uh, I just, again, I found it kind of boring. So that's a shame. Uh, but your mileage may vary. I know it's been getting a bit of buzz. Coming up next is Floristry, and this is a game from a Japanese publisher that unfortunately is going to be very, very difficult to get a hold of. And I say unfortunately because it's a really good game. Uh, I'm giving Floristry an 8.5. Uh, I think this is an excellent, excellent game. You've probably heard the phrase Splendor Killer thrown around a whole lot. Um, and it's become a bit of a joke at this point, but uh, to me, Floristry is really a splendor killer. It has a very similar idea where you're going to be getting cards uh, in front of you that are going to give you symbols that make it easier for you to get other cards further along in the game. And you're doing this through um, a dice draft, okay? So you'll have dice of different colors and different values on those dice, and you're gonna be drafting them, and then you're gonna be spending those dice to get flower cards, um, small and large flower cards. The, the theme of this is that you are a florist's apprentice, and you are trying to gain skill in creating uh, different bouquets that customers will want. So there's a bit of a contract fulfillment element to it, where you have particular cards that need a particular arrangement of flowers that you're getting with these flower cards. And so you're drafting dice, getting these flower cards, turning in these flower cards for uh, bouquet cards that are gonna give you points. And again, they're gonna give you symbols to make it easier to complete the more complex, higher point value cards. It is a gorgeous production. Uh, I think it's a really, really solid game, uh, an engine building type of a game. Um, not terribly long, has a nice turn order mechanism that makes turn order very, very important. I really think Floristry is great, and I hope, hope, hope that some publisher picks this up and gives it a wider release. Coming up next is 
Oh bomb do video game. I'm giving this one an eight. This was a Brazilian game that has now been announced that uh, Arcane Wonders is going to be bringing it to English uh, speaking audiences and uh, Dice Tower in, in the Dice Tower Essential line. And so you have to take that into account. However, when I first played this game, that was not the case. It was not part of the Dice Tower Essentials line. It had not been picked up by Arcane Wonders. So. Um, my rating, I think, should not be kind of in the context of a dice tower type of a thing. Uh, why is it an eight? Well, it's an eight because it's a really interesting game mechanically. You've got a grid of tiles that you're going to be choosing uh, one of these tiles, and then there'll be actions that are associated along columns and rows depending upon each of these tiles. So when you're drawing a tile, not only is it something you're gonna be using later, but you're getting the associated actions of the, the column or row. So a nice uh, kind of a mechanically solid game, but what puts it into a higher echelon is the theme. If you've got a connection to um, playing video games, going to a video rental store and renting video games, trying to beat those games during the day or two that you've got them rented, this is going to really shine for you because uh, it evokes that theme very well. They do nice little touches thematically where you're trying to get money from your grandmother or for your parents by doing chores, things along those lines, because you don't have a job as a kid, you've got to get your money elsewhere. And so uh, it's really, a, a great theme, nicely implemented. It has a few rough edges to it. That's what keeps it from going into the excellence range for me. Um, but man, is it fun. And it has a great theme. That is Obam Do Video Game. All right, and finally, we've got uh, the new hotness. We've got Wormspan, which is the follow-up to Wingspan. Uh, I'm giving this an eight out of 10. Now, this one has room to grow, okay? Um, I don't think it's gonna be through the use of expansions, although I'm relatively sure they will release expansions. Where I think this might have room to grow is just by playing it more. I've played it several times, but there's a lot of cards in that deck, and I don't feel like, first of all, I haven't gone through every iteration of the different kind of goal tiles. There's goal tiles that you can have for each game. Uh, they're double-sided. I don't think I've gone through every single one of those, so that will add some variety, but really just getting to know the cards better because it's a pretty large deck of cards, similar to the way Wingspan is. Um, and it's satisfying. I, I, I think it's a bit more of a gamery type game. I know that's a, a, an odd adjective, but, but I think it's more suited to uh, hobby gamers than even Wingspan was, because although I would say it shares probably 80 to 85% uh, mechanically with Wingspan, somewhere in that range, um, the changes are, I think, significant and to the better. Um, my favorite element of the game is that you've got much more of an engine building quality to it than you did in Wingspan, uh, where you are placing dragons into your caves. You have three rows of caves, which will sound familiar to Wingspan folks. Um, but the big difference here is that the way you trigger them is by an action. The way you trigger the actions of the dragons in that cave is by a particular explore action that allows you to move a little explorer meeple from left to right, and you're gonna gain a number of benefits. And so you can set up some really nice synergistic uh, combos so that you are getting resources to help you pay for later actions in that same row, giving you discounts, all kinds of stuff. It's a very satisfying game in that sense. Um, I, I don't particularly love the look of the game, which is a shame. I, I think that there are some elements of, of the art that I like a lot, and I like the theme. I, I'm good with Wingspan too, for that matter, but um, there's something about it that just looks a little bit almost unfinished to me. Um, like there definitely could have been more time made spending it to, to, to make it look like it popped a little bit more. To me, it's kind of washed out. So if that's just a personal opinion. The game mechanically is very solid, and that's why it gets an 8 out of 10. All right, well, that's going to do it for my rapid fire roundup. This is Mike Delisio signing off from the Dice Tower Midwest Annex.